SpaceX is going to catch the world's largest rocket out of the air using a giant robot named Mechazilla with a pair of hydraulic-powered steel chopsticks. This might sound insane, and that's because it is. We are talking about a decision that will make or break the future of SpaceX, and it's all happening this month. Success is far from certain, but excitement is guaranteed. This is a site that many of us have grown accustomed to. It's a Falcon 9 rocket booster returning from space to land on a floating platform in the ocean. SpaceX has successfully completed this maneuver on land and sea over 300 times. But if we were to go back 10 years ago, pretty much any rocket scientist in the world outside of those working for SpaceX would have told you that landing an orbital rocket booster is just not possible. And of course, the first few attempts that SpaceX made to prove them wrong didn't exactly work out so well. There would be many explosive failures before, eventually, success. It was a success that would open the door for SpaceX to become the dominant force in the modern space industry with their fleet of fully, rapidly reusable rocket boosters. And now, a decade after Falcon 9 changed the world, SpaceX is ready to do the impossible all over again. Only this time, the rockets are bigger, the stakes are higher, and the outcome is totally unpredictable. But why though? Why do you need to catch a rocket with a giant robot? SpaceX has already more than proven that rockets can land all on their own. They just need some legs, right? This is the SpaceX Starship Super Heavy. It's a two-stage orbital rocket, the biggest and most powerful ever built. The Starship is the pointy bit at the top with wings, and the Super Heavy is everything underneath the ship. This is the booster stage that performs all of the heavy lifting involved in getting the ship into space. So on one hand, the Starship is the most advanced rocket in the world, but on the other hand, it's been designed from the ground up to be as cheap and fast to manufacture as possible. SpaceX wants to build a thousand of these things, at least. And Elon Musk has a famous philosophy when it comes to simplifying the production process. The best part is no part. So therefore, the best landing leg is no landing leg, which supports the other big goal of Starship to put as much stuff into outer space as possible. And the best way to do that is to maximize your thrust to weight ratio. The lighter the rocket, the more mass to orbit it can carry. So instead of trying to design and build the world's largest landing legs for the world's largest rocket, SpaceX simply deleted the landing gear altogether, which is cool and all, but the rocket still gotta land somehow, right? This is Mechazilla. In simple terms, it's Starship's launch tower, but Mechazilla has grown to become something much more than that. It's become the solution to Starship's landing dilemma. Since you can't actually delete landing gear entirely, what SpaceX has done is cut and paste from the rocket to the launch tower. So instead of giving your rocket a set of legs, you give your tower a pair of arms. In theory, this is genius. But what happens when you do it in real life? Ever had that moment of panic when someone gets into your car and you realize it doesn't smell as fresh as it should? We've all been there. Whether it's the lingering scent of last night's takeout or just the stale air, it's not exactly the first impression you want to make, and that is where drift comes in. Drift car fresheners are designed to eliminate those unwanted odors with clean, non-toxic ingredients, leaving your car smelling fresh and inviting. Their sleek wood designs start at just $9 and the metal ones at $15, offering both style and substance. The best part? With their subscription service, you'll never have to worry about bad smells sneaking up on you again. Each month, a new scent arrives at your door, so your car is always ready for passengers. This month, I tried the amber-scented wood car freshener, and I loved it. The soft smell of vanilla, golden amber, and French lavender made me feel like I was in a spa. And right now, Drift is offering an exclusive deal for my viewers. Use the promo code TESLA55 to get 55% off your first month, which makes it less than $5 for your first month. Just click the link in the description or scan the QR code on the screen. Trust me, with Drift, you'll never have to worry about a bad-smelling car again. So. Why not treat your car to the premium sense it deserves? With Drift, every ride can be a fresh one. What we are looking at right now is SpaceX practicing for their first catch attempt of the Super Heavy Booster. 
Space nerds have nicknamed this process the slap test, and it's pretty clear why. The ground crews at Starbase are trying to get a feel for what happens when those two chopstick-like arms clamp down on a rocket at high velocity. SpaceX has been using the chopsticks as a method to lift the Starship and Super Heavy into position on the launch pad, so they know perfectly well that the system can handle a rocket, but those stacking maneuvers are very slow and deliberate movements. Everything is highly controlled. When the Super Heavy booster returns from space, it's in a state of freefall, traveling like a supersonic javelin towards the Earth and pointed directly back at its place of origin, the Starbase Launch Tower. As the booster pierces through the cloud layer, it's moving at over 1,000 kilometers per hour. This is when the engines kick back on and begin a rapid deceleration phase. As the booster approaches closer to the ground, the engines gradually shut down as the airspeed drops. In the final seconds, the booster descends over Mechazilla. Now only the three center engines remain lit, and they are swiveling around in all directions to steer the booster into its final position ahead of the wide-open chopsticks. At the last possible moment, the booster is down to just one engine and settles into a hover. As Mechazilla pulls its arms closed, the rocket shuts down, and the weight of the giant booster is cradled by the chopsticks. A lot just happened in a very short amount of time. Let's backtrack a little bit. As the booster falls through the air, it's being controlled by aerodynamic grid fins located right at the top. This allows the guidance system to line up on a very precise landing trajectory. This is also the point where the computer has to make a big decision. Are we go for landing or do we abort? If all of the booster systems check out, then the grid fins will steer towards the launch pad. But if anything comes back negative, then the booster heads straight for the ocean. Here is what that looked like on Starship flight test number four. This was the first time a Super Heavy had made it all the way to its landing burn without blowing up. As the rocket descends through the cloud layer, the engines reignite and begin the deceleration phase. Now in this particular case, one of those engines did explode, but even still, we see a very slow controlled lowering of the booster down to the surface of the water where it hovers for a moment and then slowly tips over. So imagine that, but instead of dropping into the water and falling down, the booster is snatched from the air by Mechazilla's chopsticks. It's starting to seem a little more possible, right? Now the moment of the catch involves a lot of very complex moving parts. The original plan was to have the arms come up under the grid fins and catch the booster like that, which would provide a large surface area for the chopsticks to grab, but proved to be a bad idea. So SpaceX integrated a catch point into either side of the booster. They are located just below the grid fins. These little metal nubs, that's what the ground crews have been using, to grab the rockets when they're being lifted onto the launch mount. These catch points on the rocket are designed to interface with dedicated catch rails on the top edge of the chopstick arms. This makes for a very precise operation. You've got two pieces of metal, each only a few inches across, and they need to line up perfectly for all of this to work. The rails have built-in shock absorbers, so once the pins hit, the whole booster can drop a couple of feet before the full weight is on the chopstick arms. The arms are driven up and down by a wire and pulley system that's powered by electric motors down in the base, so once the arms have hold of the booster, the draw works will cradle it in and hold the weight. This all depends on the booster's ability to hover. Its airspeed should be pretty close to zero when the catch procedure goes down. That's something that the Falcon 9 can't do even at the lowest throttle setting. Its engine has too much power to hover. The Blue Origin New Shepard does a really nice job of hovering in place before touching down for a landing, so just picture that, but with a rocket 10 times the size. It's going to be one hell of a show. As Elon Musk loves to remind us with many of his projects, success is far from certain, and that is particularly true of the booster catch attempt. The possibility of failure is high, and so are the consequences. We have already seen the one and only example of a soft touchdown by the Super Heavy. Every other booster has exploded in mid-air, and you can tell that even this most recent one was just on the edge of explosion itself. It was definitely on fire. So you would think that SpaceX might want just a little more practice with this thing before trying to bring it back to the launch pad. 
place where all of their very expensive and damageable things are, such as the launch mount, the launch tower, and this giant tank farm where they store the rocket fuel. If we remember back to those early days of the Falcon 9, SpaceX completed a few soft touchdown attempts on the ocean before they moved on to the drone ship landings, where the rocket booster would experience several explosive crash landings before they finally started to get it right. So even among the dedicated space fans, there is no shortage of people who think that SpaceX is moving too fast and are probably going to break things. But they are not Elon Musk. Almost immediately after Starship Flight 4, Elon started talking about a booster catch attempt on Flight 5, and in the weeks since then, we've seen Elon's crew at SpaceX working diligently towards that goal. In addition to the slap testing with some partially constructed booster sections, the chopstick arms have also been receiving a complete overhaul, with new hydraulic systems and a new set of padding on the inside of the chopstick to help cradle the booster as they clamp down. Now, what happens if things don't go according to Elon's plan? Well, the first line of defense is the booster's onboard computer. During the freefall stage, there is going to be a full system check performed and the catch attempt does not go forward unless it's green all across the board. So there's something like a 50-50 chance that the landing is aborted while the rocket is still high above the earth and it simply continues to fall straight down into the ocean, which means that the likelihood of a catastrophic failure on the landing is very low. I don't think we are going to see any kind of a high velocity impact. The biggest risk just comes down to precision. If the booster is just a few feet too far forward, backward, left, or right, then it could hit the tower. It could hit a chopstick. It could come down just out of reach of the arms. Then it'll probably blow up, which is not the ideal outcome, but is a lot of fun to watch. The best part here is that we don't have to sit and speculate for much longer. The next test flight of Starship will happen sometime within the next two or three weeks, probably late September, and this one might turn out to be the greatest spectacle so far. Thank you to Drift for partnering with us on this video. Check out the link down below in the description.